of your life. If you just begin to look unto Him. For by me, thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. Talking about wisdom. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. Now look, I can be wise for a lot of people. But the one that really counts is myself. That's the one that really counts. I am a firm believer in minding your own business. And I don't mean that in the bad sense. I mean that in what this Scripture said, that if you don't take care of you, nobody else is. I can't change you. I can't rescue you. The only person that I can do anything for, truthfully and honestly, is Bruce Williams. I can change me. You know that's what prayer does? I hear people talking all the time about how prayer changes God's mind about stuff. <laughs> you know what prayer does? Let me tell you something. God got His mind made up. He's sovereign. Everything He said, He's done it. He said it. That's it. Bottom line. And you ain't going to rewrite the book for you. I can tell you that. But what prayer does is prayer takes me over into God's will for my life. And I begin to understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. The path that I'm walking. And I begin to, if I'm a wise man, I can see how God is using this stuff in my life to straighten me out. Tony, can you relate to that? Can you think about anything back there years ago that God allowed you to go through in your life that began to straighten you out a little bit? You began to see God's hand at work in it. You said, yes, Lord, I'm going to walk with you. Yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Anybody here, can you see that? I don't know. You know, maybe it, maybe it was that divorce you went through. Maybe it, was, maybe it was some loss of some job somewhere or somewhere doing something. Maybe it was some sickness that came upon your life and, and it was life-threatening or it got your attention and began to, began to change you. A wise man will look at those situations and say, yes, I can see how God is using that. I was busy stomping the ground and rebuking devils and trying to get the devil to jump off of me and the whole time God was allowing this in my life so that it would turn me more toward Him. Listen, I told all y'all a long time ago, I quit worrying about the devil a long time ago. Don't come to me telling me the devils are doing this and the devils are doing that. If you're a child of God, you've been blood bought. The only thing He can do to you is tear down your faith and your mind in Christ and what He's done on the cross of Calvary. Anything that you and I suffer in this life, listen, it's got to come through the will of God. It's got to come through His purpose. And somehow or another, He takes that and we're suffering. He takes that that we're going through and we realize our need that we have in Him and we begin to look to Jesus and say, yes, Lord, not my will, but your will. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to drink this cup because you're carrying me down the aisle of faith. You're teaching me your ways. Amen? Amen. 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 The devil only gets a hold of people that let him. That's why the Scripture says, neither to kill for place to the devil. Katie and me was talking about this here a while back about opening up doors. For the devil, you'd be surprised what a child understands about opening up doors for the devil. When you go places you ain't supposed to be going, you open it up a door. Amen. When you sleeping around, that's why adultery and fornication. A man sins against his own soul when he does that. A woman sins against her own soul whenever they do that. Because the Bible talks about how a man and a woman shall become one flesh. But that's only in the eyes of God that it becomes righteous and becomes right. Amen? There is a spiritual connection between two people. And that's how come fornication and adultery are so wrong because a man sins against his own soul. He kills his own soul. He tears his own soul down. Amen. And that's how come that it that's how come that uh, that that there's so many problems associated with all of that. He says 
A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on the seat of the high places in the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Now listen, he's, not, he's giving you a typology here. I know he's using a foolish woman. But really what he's talking about is a foolish way here. Because I'm going to tell you something. You can fall into sin and not even have to try Listen to what it says. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith unto him. In other words, we could, we could redefine this foolish woman. Not as a human being. But as a wrong way, as a foolish way, as a, a foolish direction in your life. In other words, you ain't even got to try. You ain't even got to guard your heart. All you got to do is let your guard down, get your eyes off Jesus Christ, and guess what? A foolish woman going to take you over. And how easy it is to sit on your derriere, there's that French word again, and not do nothing. And turn into the foolish. You can sit and do nothing and go in a wrong direction so easy. It takes effort. It takes effort on your heart and your decision to walk in the right way. You've got to have a mindset that says, you know what? I'm going to choose God's way. And I'm going to ask for His wisdom and His understanding to be able to help me. Listen. I know maybe some of y'all want me to come here and high dog it and shout and holler and speak in tongues and all that tonight and have a Holy Ghost showdown. But folks, I'm giving you something here tonight that'll help you. I mean, when I get done hooping and hollering and praying and squalling and speaking in tongues, that's it. You go home and that's over. But I'm giving you something here you can take home and think about for a while. You can chew on this. Yeah. She will. Amen. Amen. Stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. That's what that crazy way says. But he that knoweth not that the dead are there. Let me back up on that one more time. I'm going to do what Lois tells me not to do. Explain myself again. <laughs> the foolish woman, the clamorous woman, is not talking about a woman. Not a physical woman. It is talking about a spiritual concept that says, listen, all I've got to do is be lazy and not walk in God's way and I will instantly turn into the foolish woman's ways. In other words, and, and it's so easy to realize that if I choose her way, if I go into the foolish woman, if I go into the way that's not God's wisdom and not His understanding, what the simple doesn't understand is that there is death there. There is death waiting for you. I mean, spiritual death. That's why, that's why a lot of people have went through the hell that they went through because they went away that wasn't God's way. They went away that wasn't God's wisdom. And let me tell you something. You may go home tonight and you say, they say well, I'm going to get wisdom. I'll come back in two weeks when Brother Weeks has meeting again and I'll be chock full of wisdom. Don't you even fool yourself. Brother Weeks has been asking for wisdom since he got saved. And I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Amen? It takes a lifetime. It takes a lifetime of living experiences, good and bad, to allow that wisdom to grow. If you live to be 90-something years old, I had an uncle that learned to play the piano at 92. Died at 96, but he lived in L.J. He was always learning, always wanting to learn. He was a college professor at one time. Always wanting to learn. I went up there one day, he was 92-year-old, he said, Bruce, I've learned to play the piano. I said, yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> but went in the house and he had I mean, he was forever learning. And by the time he was 96, this 96-year-old man could play the piano pretty good. Never had a music lesson in his life. Just sit up. I guess he had heard enough notes in 92 years. He could decipher it out. He probably looked at that thing and said, why didn't I play you like that 60 years ago? 
Because he didn't have time properly. And you see, wisdom comes as you live life and you ask God and you look at the bad choices you've made and you learn something from it. And you change. You change. That's the key. You've got to change. 